Get off. <laughs> Get away. Where is he? Where Get is off he? me, Chris. <laughs> 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 Get off me, Chris. <laughs> 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 Right, well, welcome to another week of WWN Proving Ground. I'm Sean Davis here with Vic Lohan. That's right, I'm shining in prime time. And I'm cutting off Michael James right now, Sean Davis, because New Ori is heading to the ring along with Zakira, the Pirates, excuse me. And it is, it is even better, better together. <laughs> So shouldn't at this point, shouldn't it just be better together? Since apparently they've just taken over that mantle of that name. They have absolutely taken over, but they're like new coke. They're even better than better together, so they should stay even better together. Well, apparently even better together is the only better together now. Yes, that's right. Out with the old, in with the new. Boy, is that... I like Whoa. how Zachyrus wears that cowboy hat. It's very, very stylish. I don't know. It's a little creepy in my opinion. I don't ah, know. Creepy is in. Of course, not to take anything away from his opponent, Derek Je or Damian Gemini. One half of the Puerto Rican Hound Dogs. And last week, these two teams did battle in the ring. That's right. And the Hound Dogs did get the win. And as your your friend, Donnie Ray Harris Jr., whoever you stuck me with the last two weeks, he was making mention of the losing streak right now of even better, better together, which I didn't like to hear. Well, I think they're still even better, better together is trying to still get their act together, I guess you would say, but uh, I don't know. I'm still very impressed with these two. So doubt about that, but Damian Gemini, you know, he's putting in a request to the committee here at WWN Proving Ground that he wants more singles opportunities and apparently they granted him that this week. Well, he's been getting better every week, I have to admit. In fact, you know what? I think he's kind of becoming a competitor. Wow, that wow, was nice. look at that. Look at the athletics of both men. I think he's trying to get on the radar of the ACW Cruiserweight Championship, I dare say. Oh, he takes down Ori. Ori Karana took him over. Clothesline in the corner. New Ori Mitchell into the corner, but up and over. Wow, look at the look at the athletics. So, oh, but he got caught right in the face from Damian Gemini. Oh, ref's gonna need to check the nose of New Ori. Flying clothesline brings New Ori Andrew Mitchell down. Damian Gemini is on top here, but oh, here comes Andrew Mitchell, excuse me, Andrew New Ori back. New Ori right there. Had the nice. double chop to the throat and then oh, nailed him with that shot to the back. <laughs> and the support there by Zacchaeus, a nice kick to the back and New Ori in control. I'll tell you, we got so many things going on here at WWN Proving Ground. We got tonight's big show going on. We got the new rock and wrestling shows going on at the OCC. And of course, Sean Davis, you know all about this. Battle of the Brave is coming up in one month's time. That's right, our huge, huge fundraiser for the Tunnel to Tower Foundation. I can't wait for that. That is gonna be incredible. And I'll tell you, these two are looking forward to it. Right now, New Ori wondering what's going on with the crowd. Why are they cheering on Damian Gemini? Because he knows, in the end, New Ori's going to win this match. As, as talented as Damian Gemini is, you know, and he gets those occasional wins, I just think New Ori's a little too experienced for him. Damian Gemini, the hometown favorite here in Port Ritchie, and he definitely has the fans behind him. Hits the ropes, counters that shot by New Ori, Andrew Mitchell. Picks him up, has him picture perfect. Vertical suplex brings him down. Uh -oh. oh, but he's not stopped. Is he going for the three amigos? One more. Oh, he is. 
No, it's countered. Nuori counters it. Brings them down with a Falcon's arrow. Goes for the pin. Two count only. Damian Gemini kicks out. I'm enjoying how both wrestlers right now just keep going straight for the moves and keep trying to get the pins on each other. No wasted space in between these two youngsters right now. Well, that's what it's all about, getting the win. And that was a what a cocky maneuver right there by New Ori. You're not going to get a win that way, Big Slow Man. Oh, you never know. I've seen it done maybe once or twice in the last half century. Once or twice indeed. These two are going toe to toe right now. You can hear the flesh smacking all the way up here in the Eagle's Nest at the WWN Training Center. And they're, oh, they're just unloading now. Sig bouncing off the ropes as Gemini to the second. Oh, he was able to scout out Ori. He's got him hooked. Is this one it? Has him up and down. Power bomb. Going for the pin. Two and no, not quite three. What an amazing kick up by New Ori because Jim and I had him double hooked legs and everything. In fact, he's talking to the ref about it, but if I was Jim and I, I would try to keep on my opponent as quickly as possible. Oh! Oh, what a chop by Damian Gemini. Sends New Ori in, reversal goes in. Well, Zach Harris, I just saw he just tripped Damian I'm Gemini. Did the referee just see that? Up. Big leg drop! Big leg drop Are by you New Ori! Are you kidding me? One, two, and yeah. three! New Ori, Andrew Mitchell gets the win over Damian Gemini with help from his tag team partner. Uh, only supportive help. Only Zach, oh, Zach come Kyrus on. Is a very supportive guy. That was blatant interference right there. Come on. A win for New Ori, Andrew Mitchell, but a cheap win indeed. For the Michael Zachiris, the art in himself is um, all of his splendor right now. The artistry, the athleticism, he is definitely a spectacle in that ring, Sean Davis. Well, he's hard to miss for sure. I mean, come on. Well, guys like a walking neon billboard. It reminds me of my days in Vegas. Uh, you know, I, I don't quite remember my days in Vegas, and maybe according to the Nevada state law, that might be a good thing. Coming to the ring, though, is a very interesting opponent for Zekairis. It is Nicholas Kionez making his return here to Proving Ground. That's right. I know he's been battling injuries, and he's battling a whole lot of Krieger lately. Well, yeah, he's had his hands full with Krieger, becoming something of an international feud between these two men. Oh, it, it's been international, Sean, and it has been personal. I'll tell you that straight out. Well, I guarantee nothing has been settled between these two men yet, yet. but tonight, tonight, Nicholas Quinones has his hands full with Zakiris, and he has to contend with the fact that New Ori Mitchell is on the outside of the he ring. He doesn't have to worry about New Ori Mitchell. He's just there for support. You know, he's just trying to cheer on his man, Zachiris. Make sure the winning streak that they now have going on continues. Oh, Kanones, he's going to bring a very good ground assault in this match against Zachiris. Oh, nice defense right there by Zachiris. But look at Nick, Nick Quinones with the scientific wrestling. 
rolls through and back into a hammer lock on Zakyrus. Let's see if Zakyrus can get out of it. Dub Nicholas lets him out, snap mirrors him over, goes for a pin attempt right away with a crucifix maneuver. Zakyrus manages to get out. Nick Quinones now with the front face lock, but Zakyrus is fighting back. Fighting back, and actually both guys jostle for the position. It's oh! Brutal clothesline in the oh, corner. That is, that is vicious, and it fouls up with that big bulldog. This one could be over already here. Well, I know Cononis, he's very, very angry as to what's been going on with this feud with Krieger. And he's got Zakyrus. I keep missing that poor guy's name up. He, in a lot of trouble right now, big elbow. This could be it, Sean Davis. Well, he measured him and came down with either an elbow or a forearm, but it was square on the face of Zakiris right there. He's definitely zoinked him out right now. I know Canonas, he's look, definitely looking forward to the Battle of the Brave coming up in a month. We're well, Nicholas Canonas, he's a veteran of the United States Army. And he's gonna be representing the red, white, and blue on J July the 22nd. Battle for the Brave here in Newport Ritchie. But right now it's Zykyrus. And yeah, wait a minute, New Ori Mitchell just got in a cheap shot on I, the outside. I, I think he just faked him out. I think he wanted to hit him with the cheap shot, but it didn't happen. Look at that beautiful dance by Zykyrus. I don't know about beautiful, it was something, but let's see how Zykyrus can follow up on Nick Quinones. Can he get, yes! Oh! Nick, yeah, Nicholas Quinones is not a small guy, but he powered him over with that super. He's amazing. Both guys have a lot of power. Zakyrus is just, he's got that speed going with him. That's what's working in this match against Quinones. Now let's face it, Quinones has been through a lot of battles. He certainly has. But Zakyrus certainly holding his own tonight here at WWN Proving Ground. But he's talking a little bit of smack right now, which I think he should just be sticking on Nick Quinones as hard as I possible. I think he's doing fine right now. I think they're in a position to go two for two tonight. Well, I think um, even better, better than together is always better than No, 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 it's better. even better, better together. Not uh, better, even better than better Better than together. better, better together. Who's it's watching? even better than better together. No. Oh, no? Oh, oh, look at that. Well, that was even better. And I'll tell you, better, better together, or better together right now, watching halfway across the world, wondering what happened to our spots at Proving Ground. It's all over for them because the Kairos and New Ori is handling things even better. Well, I hear a rumor that the what real rumor? better together are making their plans to return what? to the United States or return to WWE Proving Ground. Where'd you hear this rumor? I can't reveal my sources, oh. Big Lohan. But, oh, but right now, Nicholas Quinones is making a return here. And see, Quinones. Oh, look, he kept the big man up and drives him right down with the spy monster. One, two, but two. Couldn't quite get the three count. Well, that's the thing in this match, you gotta be careful. Quinones is the much more experienced man in singles competition. And he might have a little more gas in the tank as the match goes on. Well, he's going to, to get, get him up, up again. Oh, no, I don't think he can get him. I don't think he can get him. Wait a minute, Andrew Mitchell. Excuse me, New Ori just tried to interfere again, but Nick Quinones stopped him. He has Andrew Wait, Mitchell. Wait, he's going to New Ori. And oh! Lucky Russet, New Ori. He hit his own partner. A spear by Nick Quinones. One, two, three, and that's it. Nick Quinones with the big win. I can't believe Nicholas Panone has broke the winning streak of even better, better together. That just ruined my night, Sean Davis. Nicholas Quinones, big, big win. Well, none, no, nonetheless, nonetheless, a big win for Nicholas Quinones, who I know he's got his sights set on July 22nd, and he's got his sights set on the German monster, Krieger. That's right, Nicholas Quinones, he's gonna be a part of that giant Southern Stampede, 25 men, anything goes rules. And he says he's gonna get the win for the USA, but wait a minute, wait a minute, there's Krieger, he's on the attack. <laughs>
The German madman Krieger comes out of nowhere and attacks Nicholas Quinones. Oh, I love it, Sean Davis. I love it. Oh, oh that just... That shit chills up and down my spine. He's out of our camera view right here, out of our monitor, but Krieger on the attack of Nicholas Quinones. We said it before, that battle obviously is not over. Okay, Vic Slohan, what a way to end that last match. That big attack by Krieger. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I love it. We got, I think the EMT's got to check in on Canona's in the back. But right now, we got Tyler Tough Uriah. Now, this is a return for Too Tough Tyler Uriah. He's been out of action here for a couple weeks, at least. I believe the last time we saw him was the Young Lions uh, Cup yes. tournament. Well, he was a finalist in That's there against right. Drake Xavier. Made it to the end against Drake Xavier. Drake Xavier did get the win. But Tyler Uriah is back. I'm very interested to see how Tyler Uriah is going to do without a manager now. Yes, you know? he's decided to go it solo, to go it alone right now. I still think he's got the goods to make it well in proving ground, though I'll tell you. Anytime you have the captain by your side, it will always be good. But tonight, he's got to prove it. As Mike James says, K9 Alpha T, who's been rising up the ranks here at Proving Ground in WWN. Well, he certainly has. But I think, I'll tell you, I'm not sure what happened. We know that Captain Aranova left Proving Ground for a little while. He came back as manager of the set incorporated. But I'll tell you, too tough Tyler Uriah. I'd like to get to the bottom of exactly what happened between him and Captain Oh, you're, no, you're always trying to drum up some drama or some No, no, no. I just sort of for the scandal. sake of our for the sake of our viewers, they want to know uh, exactly what's going on behind the scenes here at WWN Proving Ground. But personally, I think Tyler Uriah, he is in perfect perfect physical condition. And I think his time has come in the world of professional Well, I'll wrestling. agree with you that with Sean Davis. I just think, you know, it's just an amical business situation. Tyler Rye has decided to go it on his own, the captain. He's got his hands full right now. He's helping out the set incorporated. And boy, has he been helping him out. <laughs> Well, but Tyler Uriah, I believe he finally realized that he doesn't need anybody out there with him. He, this kid has got all the tools to go as far as he wants to in the world of professional wrestling. Oh, that he does. Now, he does have his hands full tonight. K9 Alpha T, a big, big dude, a young guy in the world of professional wrestling, but someone that has been impressing everyone that's seen him in action. I have to agree with this also because when I first saw him, he's a big brawling type of guy, likes to use a lot of strength. Over the past several weeks, he's been kind of diversifying his attack, diversifying his wrestling, and it's been actually upsetting a few wrestlers here and there here on Proven Ground. Well, you can tell he's been putting the time in wherever he's training right now, which hey, if you're watching right now, you want the perfect place to train. It's right here at the WWN Training Center. You can find out more by going to WWNTC.com. You can make your dreams come true of, of becoming a professional wrestler right here. And you could be in this very ring and featured right here on WWN Proving Ground. Yes, you can be at the receiving end of a boot of tough Tyler Uriah. Making you wish, why? No, oh, you ever got in a squared circle. Oh, look Where at those is? deep arm oh. drags. Like I said, he's getting better, Alpha T, every week. Big body slam. Drives him down with that body slam. But he's wasting some time right now before dropping that elbow. But still, K9 Alpha T showing what he's made of here at WWM Proving Ground. No, I'm too tough Tyler Raya. Besides, maybe it's time for a little bit of a break. See, that's the thing that's wise. Get out of the ring, let some time go. Oh, hey, hey, referee, come on, break this up. 
Wake this up, ref. Come on, we gotta oh. go by rules and regulations here. Alpha T saying, wait a minute, I'm not done with you, kid. You gotta get in here. But oh, Tyler Uriah ah. takes advantage of the situation. Maybe took advantage of some of that inexperience of K9 Alpha T right I there. I think you're right. That veteran veteran leadership right there. And here comes those shoulder blocks by Tyler Uriah. Here comes the shot. Oh, look at those jabs. Beautiful. Making sure the ref is minding his P's and Q's in that ring. Now just going in there, strangling in on Alpha T. Nice. Using the full four and a half count. Well, young referee David Sanderson, he needs to go ahead and, and be well, maybe a little bit more aggressive, but it's tough when you're in there with somebody like Tyler Uriah. David Sanderson. I'm going to write that down because, you know, I, I I don't know my refs very well. Well, here comes Alpha T's fighting back. Headbutt as Tyler. Oh, we had him rocking for a second there, but Uriah cuts him off. Sets him up to send him into the ropes. Pulls up. Beautiful drop kick by Tyler Uriah. Absolutely amazing. Goes for the cover. Almost gets the three. You know, and that Sanderson, you know, he, he is a young ref in there. I'm a little worried about him. But right now, it's Tyler Uriah in control on K9 Alpha T. It's Tyler Uriah in control right now, a proving ground. Yeah, I think maybe the one you should be concerned about right now is K9 Alpha T because too tough Tyler Uriah is it? Well, I say he's in full control, but K9 Alpha T is fighting back. Giant punch to the midsection right there. Oh, look at that big right about him. God, that looked like a knockout punch to me, but Uriah is still on his feet. He's able to get that kick to the knee, but Uriah's got to be careful about his midsection because I'll tell you, Alpha T can throw some shots that will take you down very quickly. Misses, misses again. Oh, flying shoulder tackle. Brings Tyler Uriah down. Oh, this could be a tourney match at this point, Sean Davis. Alpha T right now getting some momentum behind him. He has the fans behind him as well. He's getting psyched up, comes running in. Takes Uriah down, brings him down again. High impact offense from K9 Alpha. He has him up. Power slam! Going for the big two. And no, not quite. It was so close, though. He almost put him through the ring with that move. That was an incredible running power slam. Drove him right, like you said, almost through the mat right there. He said every week this kid's getting better and better. This is a very unique match here. In but, but, but look again, it seems to me like he's taking too much time trying to get Uriah up. He has a position. Uriah's in the eyes. He's in the eyes. Smart veteran move by Tyler Uriah. Oh, but counter again by K9 Alpha T. Tyler Uriah looked like he was going for the discus punch. Oh, Alpha T off the, wow, look at the agility. I've never seen a dog fly like that, I'll tell you, Sean Davis. Well, there was nobody, there was no water in the pool at that point. Let's see if you're right. Spinning clothesline. More of a discus, discus lariat. I think this one is over. I think you're right, Sean Davis. Well, two, yes, and three. Tyler Uriah, too tough himself, is the winner. A great back and forth match, Sean Davis. Tyler Uriah, even though he's without the captain, he is on his winning ways. And Alpha T, well, he got to worry about this tonight and come back next week and improve. Well, Sean Davis, here comes one of the more interesting tag teams here at Proving Ground, RB Unique. Well, we have two really interesting tag teams uh, with Patrick Slohan. And by interesting, I mean weird. A little bit weird, a little, little off-center. Now, last Saturday at Rockin' Wrestling, at the OCC Roadhouse in Clearwater. These two got a win.
over their opponents tonight. So this is a bit of a rematch. It should be an interesting one. Should be. Oh, what? Oh my God. Do you smell something? Oh my God. What is, what that? is that? What is that smell? I need a gas mask over here. Oh, oh my God. That's the Gator King. Do you oh. think... Do you think, do you think Boone maybe just came from the swamp? I think he just literally came from the Ever Everglades. I think he walked through some of the swamps here in Port Ritchie. My, my yeah. God, this guy could clear out more sinuses than, than that Navitage or whatever commercial. Well, I oh. did instantly smell something when he came oh. into the arena. I don't know, well, with, Oh, my God. Well, well with that... I mean, how is, I mean, little Jay must have sinus issues or something if he can stand teaming with them. Well, somebody's got to stand teaming. I, I got to tell you, these, that these two have a tag team, Boone and little Jay, they've had quite a winning record. Their winning streak was broken last week at the Rock and Wrestling, but they have been tearing through opponents left and right. Yeah, Baster and Razor, they were able to isolate, actually, Boone last week. We're able to get the big man with a flying elbow drop off the top oh rope. God, after tonight, I, I would want Boone to be isolated forever. Oh my God. Can't believe it. Is that actual gator I'm smelling? It might be. I don't know. I don't know. Look, look at this. Not really having any effect here. I believe that's Bastard. Oh, but he felt that one from Boone the Gator King. Oh, and they catch a double clothesline from Boone and both go down. I'm not sure if I would try the power game with Boone the Gator King or, or even the power game against Little J. That might not be wise. I would use... Oh, sorry. I have to be quiet. Big shot by Boone. That was nasty. Is he going to do it again? No. Listen to the fans here. The WWN Training Center in Port Ritchie, Florida. Aster goes into the corner face first, and here comes Little J. The legend himself, right there into the corner with the shoulder block, and so far RB Unique's having a little tough start of this match against Boone the Gator King and Little J. Have they ever thought of a tag team name or something like that? I'm not sure. Maybe we can ask the fans to write in and, and let us know their ideas. But Little J is a, a small size guy with a huge heart. Huge heart, tremendous skill, tremendous strength. But right now, I believe that is Bastier in there taking care of business. Wait, isn't that Razor? No, it's Bass. I don't know. Well, it's a little it's a little more confusing now that they don't have the masks going on. Anymore. I know that is Little J. And that is Little J. Uh, yes. And that is a referee in there also. Yes. Oh, talking some talking talk. some South American smack right yeah, there. Goes for the cover. I'm not sure if Boone the Gator King understood what they were saying, but I don't usually understand what Boone the Gator King says, and he speaks English. I know we we need we need some subtitles here. Our poor producer already getting worked beyond his stretch of, of limitations. Listen to the fans though, fully behind little Jay and the tag to Razor. They're sending him into the ropes. Double elbow, but Boone tried to make a tag. Was he able to make a blind tag? I don't know. I thought that might have been a blind tag. I guess he didn't quite make it. Flying European uppercut there by, you know, by Baster, I believe. You know, sometimes in a tag match, when you make a blind tag, the ref doesn't see it either, and therefore it doesn't count. This is true. The fans chanting for Little J, trying to get behind him so he can make the tag to Boone the Gator King. He desperately needs to get to his partner Boone at this point. It's a futile attempt. I think RB Unique now has things in control. They're gonna take down Boone and Little J, and they're gonna go on a big two-match winning streak here. Well, they're in control right now. Can he get him up and over? Little J has that low center of gravity that actually he uses to his advantage a lot. It's very hard to get him up off oh, his feet. It's harder to get him up off his feet than you'd have someone who's lanky at 6'4". I agree. Just because of the weight distribution and the strength. Here comes Razor, flying elbow. That's how they beat him last Saturday. But Boone is in to make the save. Little Jay is still in this one. 
Lucky, lucky that Boone got in there just in time. That match was over. And, and you know what? I think Razor's telling the folks in his South American speak, this match is over. He's telling them to shut up, I believe. Hey, he feels it. He gets them up again. Look at the strength of Razor. But Little J is out. There's a kick and a DDT brings Razor down. Little J is up. He really needs to make the tag. There he goes. Makes the tag to Boone the Gator King. And Boone is in. Oh, big close. I takes him down. Elbow takes down Baster. And Boone the Gator King is in full control for his team right now. Tags Little J back in. He's telling him to get ready. Here he comes. Oh no, what are they preparing for? Oh. Sends him in. Here comes Boone. And what's now? He oh. sends him. Wow. That was he, a just, he just used his partner as a weapon. My God. And there you have it. What a win. Wow. I'm honestly concerned about Little J right now. The way his partner threw him into their opponent, he used Little J as a weapon. But your winners, Boone the Gator King and Little J. And next week, so we're going to see the man that interjected himself in the match <laughs> earlier, unceremoniously attacking Nicholas Quinones. Here he comes right now. Just let Nicholas Quinones know who is the man, whose country he's representing, destroying opponents left and right. It's the German monster, Krieger. And I don't understand. So many people have begun cheering this man. He's becoming almost a fan favorite by some of the crowd. Why, would, why wouldn't you? Look at him. Look how regal he looks. Well, for one, he hates the United States of America. He's very disrespectful to Americans in general. But I do understand the man is extremely impressive in the ring. He doesn't hate all Americans. He, he likes me, I think. I don't think he likes you, Vic Slohan. Sure. He hasn't put the claw on me yet. Didn't you sell him a used car one time that stopped working after about a I, I, I don't want to get into that. That that it's out of bounds. Hey, we got someone making a return right now. Is he Vaden? I mean, man, this guy has the life. He hangs out on the beach all day, saving pedestrians here in Florida. And then by night, he's a top professional wrestler here in the state of Florida. I know, but you know what? Unlike his mentor, he is not going to have any hit records in Germany. And tonight, this is more than just an undertow. It's an iron claw he's facing. There's no Pamela Anderson here. This lifeguard is in a lot of trouble. He very well may be facing off with the German madman, Krieger. Krieger does not look impressed at this point, does he? But it's kind of hard to tell. He always has that serious look on his face. I think that's the happiest I've ever seen him. I, it, it truly is. What, what is he doing with that? What is that? Is that a buoy? It's some sort of a, I guess, some sort of life-saving device. Yeah, you the one of the tools of the trade of being a lifeguard, right, apparently. Get that he, also has a, he also has a whistle. Is he going to wrestle with a whistle? Oh, no. He's not going to wrestle with a whistle. Oh. Well, that'd be kind of dangerous, personally. I, I thought we were done with this with Bill Alfonso and Armand Hussein. Speaking of Bill Alfonso, you know, he'll be at Battle for the Brave on July the 22nd. Really? Very excited to see what happens when the ECW legend Bill Alfonso shows up here at WWN. That would be very interesting. Oh. It's all Izzy Vaden right now. Two arm drags followed up by a drop kick. Takes Krieger down and Krieger is getting a breather right now. I'll tell you, this kid's got a lot of athleticism to him, Izzy. He's, he's been very successful in his time here at Proving Ground. Also been touring all the beaches. He enjoyed Clearwater Beach. Oh, 
Well, wait a minute. He's going to the hair. hair. There, there is, is no hair. There is no hair. hair. There is no hair on Krieger. What a mistake by his evading. He went for the hair, and there's no hair on the head of Krieger. And Kr that could have been a critical mistake right now, as it's all the German madman Krieger now. Ah, uh, Krieger now in control. That's the thing about Krieger. You don't want to battle him in the outside of the ring. Has been happening almost every week here on Proving Ground. A war with Krieger on the outside of the ring. And oh. Krieger will tear you apart. What a clothesline in the corner right now. Oh, yeah, Krieger is... He's mighty ha pleased with himself right now. I stand corrected now. That is, on the, I'm sorry, Sean Davis. That is the happiest I've ever seen him. Yeah, I, I, I think he almost cracked a smile there. Almost. I, I didn't it's one of those that. things where lightning might strike or something. This guy actually smiled and laughed, but yeah, the fans getting behind. Izzy Vade in the lifeguard right now, but Krieger's on. Wait a minute, he's fighting back. He's fighting back. Is he pulling his hair again? Man, I, I think you have to pass some sort of eye test to be a lifeguard, but Izzy Vade, for some reason, can't seem to tell the fact that he's taking on the very much cue ball Krieger. Well, it could be the end. It could be the dispelling of him and his lifeguard and wrestling career if he's not careful against the German monster Krieger. Feels him in the chin now in the head vice, the neck vice right now. Oh yeah, Krieger is man. He is. Wait a minute, the referee. Why is the referee trying to break it up? That's a legal move. Maybe he was on the on the throat there. I, I didn't see nothing on the throat. I'm hearing that whistle though. Drop. Oh. Is he made it drop down? I don't know if he got all of them though, but he definitely stunned. Krieger at that moment, clothesline brings Krieger down. Another one brings him down again. Krieger misses with the punch, Baden goes in, brings him down. He's, I'm sorry, Sean Davis, he's using that whistle as a momentum in this match. He certainly is, maybe it's some sort of secret weapon that Izzy Baden has. Looked like he was going for a belly to back suplex. Krieger fights out, it goes on the ropes. Flying clothesline brings Vaden down. Krieger going for the pin. This might be it. Two. No, no, no. Two and a half count. Izzy Vaden is up. Krieger say Krieger's calling for the claw. When he locks on the iron claw, that is it. That is always it. He's calling for Vaden to get up. He says he's gonna lock that iron claw on. Wait a minute, here comes Nicholas Quinones! He's in, and it's time for some revenge. Nicholas Quinones is all over the German madman Krieger. This is revenge for what Krieger did earlier tonight, attacking Nick Quinones as he was leaving the ring. And this war is continuing. The fight is continuing on between Nicholas Quinones and Krieger. I can't believe Nicholas Quinones interjected himself into this situation. Referee saying ring the bell, that had to be a disqualification at that point. And these two, I believe, are, wait a minute, are they still fighting? Are they fighting to the back? I I'm gonna step out because I think they're heading up this way, Sean Davis. And they're heading this way, I'm getting out of here. Oh, but Krieger still gets the win because Nicholas Quinones interfered and attacked him. Izzy Vaden is not happy with that decision. Obviously, he had nothing to do with that, but the feud continues between the German madman Krieger and the USA's Nick Quinones. It's going to be an, another great matchup here. Two absolute young lions. And speaking of a young lion, the young lion champion is going to be in this match. And there he is, here right he comes there. right now. Drake Xavier, who's been having a hell of a run here on Proving Ground, almost winning the Cruiserweight Championship. Having a great match with Jonathan Hudson, winning the Young Lions Cup. But Drake Xavier has his eyes set 
on the ACW Cruiserweight Championship, currently held by Daniel Starling. They faced recent, off recently, had a really close matchup, but Xavier was not able to get the belt. But he, he told me he has not been deterred one bit. He's going to get back in the game, and he wants that shot again against Daniel well, Starling. Well, you see, that's sad, because as much as I like Drake Xavier, he's got to temper his expectations. He's having a hell of a run, but that's Daniel Starling as the ACW champion, and he's going to stay ACW champion forever. Now, I want to well, get to this about jump. forever, but... Forever! Hans Camper. And, and I want to talk about this gentleman right now, Hans Camper. You know, I've been talking with this gentleman. He's been giving me fashion advice, you know? Very good fashion advice. I'm I, very impressed. You're not going to come out with one of those those half shirts that he's wearing. You know, right now, I, are I've you been Vince wondering. Lohan? I've been thinking about that. I don't that. know if I can handle that, my friend. Let's put it this way I promise not to dress like that if you do. I won't put you through that pain if you don't put me through that uh, pain. That might be a deal I might have to agree with. And I'd love to do that thing with his hair right there. Is that natural? Is that natural yes, blonde it is. there? Or when you're from a great country like Chile, everything is natural. Wait a minute. Yeah, you say Ch Oh, what is going on oh, there? Look at the dance moves. What and is up with that? Kemper is quite a young athlete. He's been making his way through here, proving ground, been teaming up with Bastion wow. and Razor of RB Unique. Look at the technical work between these two right now. Not quite. Not quite. Hits the ropes. He's not moving Xavier too much there. Use a little more power. You can do it. Use a little more power, young man. Oh, and Camper goes down hard. Courtesy of Drake Xavier. Well, that's the thing about Kemper. He's a very young man and a very young man in this business. This European uppercut. But then he held him in position. But Camper with the counter into the back slide. That could be it. No, didn't even get the two there. But what a clothesline brings Xavier down. Oh, yeah, he's pleased with himself. Well, he should be because instead of just worrying about if that back slide was going to work, he had another move right in the arsenal ready to go. Well, he certainly did. Hands Camper on the attack here. Picks up the bigger Xavier and brings him down hard with a body. But goes back to the gyrations. Oh, the, the ladies of Port Richard, Florida, getting a show tonight. Well, we better check on our music girl, Annie, and make sure she's okay over there watching this. Are you okay, Annie? I'll get her a fan. Okay. Don't worry. Because right. he says all the women just simply faint when they see him do his gyrations. Oh, I have seen it. It is amazing. I mean, well, Annie hasn't fainted yet. She's over there doing fine, apparently. It's early, it's early in the match, though. So. It's early. If he gets the win, I think that will happen. But nonetheless, right now, Kemper and Kajor using those long limbs of his to take down Drake Xavier. Seriously, this guy could be a, a male ballerina with those types of flexibility that he's shown us. But again, being a little too cocky for being in the ring with somebody like Drake Xavier. And listen to that shot. And when you're up against Drake Xavier, you do not want to be in a corner. That was oh. smart of Kemper to get out of the he way. He got out. Oh, what a drop kick. He has really been focusing on that one-legged drop kick. Oh, cradle suplex. Gorgeous out. Two and a half counts. Hans Camper is impressing me tonight, Vic Slohan. Absolutely. He's got the swerve on. He's got his, he's got his deal on. He's got Drake Xavier down on the count. I never thought I'd say that. Drake Xavier's been on such a run lately. He has, but Hans Camper is in control right now. But no, Xavier is fighting back, fighting back again. Let's see what happens. Hans Camper misses with that big right, but catches the leg of Drake Xavier, catches the European uppercut from Drake Xavier, comes in, Xavier blocks him, scoops him up, Salto suplex with the kick up by Drake Xavier. Xavier, say Xavier's been making that suplex, suplex such a big part of his arsenal, including this move coming up right here. Ouch! I don't know how he pulls that off without hurting himself in the process. Do this be a no? Two and a half kind of what a match we've got going on here, Vic Slowan. It is one on one between these two right now. They're wow. Both, they're both going all out here on proving ground. Fans, this is the type of action you see each and every week right here on WWE Proving Ground as we bring you the best young talent in the world of professional wrestling. 
exemplified by these two in the ring right now. Xavier has camper up, camper fights out. Super kick, ouch! My God, he must have knocked some teeth out with that one. Hooks him up, brings him up, and brings him over. This Almost, is it, Sean Davis. Is this, this is it? Is this it? Too? Oh, my gosh. Drake Xavier somehow kicks out. Wow, what a match we've got here. Now raining down the forearms on the face of Drake Xavier. Doing a great job, Hans Kemper right there, just continuing on him. But he's getting a little frustrated. He can't get frustrated. He, is. he has to continue on his opponent. I think he can't believe that Drake Xavier is still in this one. Here he comes, a flying forearm into the corner. Setting him up, sends Xavier in, but Xavier is up. A forearm to the back of the head of Kemper. Xavier is saying this might be it. He hooks him up, brings him over, German suplex. Beautifully executed by Drake Xavier. Now what's he, he's, he was signaling for something, Sean Davis. Is he going to go to the sky? Xavier says he's going up. Hits the second, hits the top. Oh, and comes down. He connected one, two, and three. Drake Xavier with the giant win. But Vic Sohan, I was so impressed with both men in this match. This was a classic, classic contest between Hans Camper and Drake Xavier. Man, I personally want to see a rematch of these two. I would like to see that also. Coming up now, Vic Slohan. I've personally really been excited and waiting for this one. The Set Incorporated taking on those them crazy bastards, baby, with a new member apparently officially. Well, let me tell you, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm happy to see the Set Incorporated. I am always happy to see the Set Incorporated. I don't know why tonight they have to face the crazy bastards and Psycho Dan Lion. Uh, and Aaron Nova. Ah, the captain. The, the man with the plan, along with the lovely and dangerous and vivacious Catalina Perez. Uh, Aaron Nova is still the bane of my existence. I had really hoped we had seen the last of him at WWM Proving Ground. <laughs> and here he is again. I am so happy. Nothing made me happier to see him come back to Proving Ground. And look who he's with. Look at these gentlemen in that ring. Rafael Delgado. Oh, wait a minute, but why? You already have Francisco Chiazzo, who's a supposed leader of the set, the godfather. You have Catalina Perez out there. Why do you need Aaron Nova too? Come on. Aaron Nova is just, he's like an offensive coordinator in an NFL game. The man's just got the X's and O's. He's got the plays going on. Catalina Perez, she is the emotional support. She is the punk machine. In there going in, going, get going, get going. Well, they're going to have their hands full right now. These guys have all earned their names, especially with that manager, Uncle Duck. Now, what, what does he do? What does he provide of any, any statistical or emotional support, Uncle Duck? This guy's just, he's wild. I, I think Catalina Perez has a little crush on Uncle Duck. Are you I kidding just, me? I just saw how she was looking at Uncle Duck. And I believe I saw her wink at Uncle Duff. She really winked at Uncle Duff? I believe she did, I'll tell you. It might be a, a Beauty and the Beast type situation. I don't know. Uh, I think she just has dust in her eyes. Well, there we go. There's, there's that animal, that stuffed teddy bear, or stuffed gopher Gunther that Psycho Dan Lydon bring into the ring. And Psycho Dan Lydon and Gunther are both dressed for Christmas. It's a little early for the holiday season. It's a little early, but 
You know what? Maybe in his head it is Christmas time year round. I'm not sure. I think they've been watching too many Danica McKellar. Oh, look, look, once again, Catalina Perez, she is flirting with, with Uncle Duck. She is putting the moves on Uncle Duck. Oh, Aaron Nova's coming out because he's obviously jealous at this point. No, Aaron Nova's here to protect Catalina Perez from whatever that's going on over there with Uncle Duck. Is, is that his go to move? I'll tell you, with all the time that Aaron Nova had been gone here from WWE Improving Ground, I thought maybe he would have been able to go to the store and get some better clothes for coming out here. Apparently, he's still dressing at the Goodwill down the street. Oh, how dare you besmirch the fashionist, the fashionist awesomeness of... Uh, you got me flustered, Sean Davis. You got me flustered. Well, you're flustered like I believe. I believe Uncle Duck doesn't know what to do with the fact that Catalina Perez is putting the moves on her out, him out there. But right now, Gus De La Vega facing off with Christian Mills of the Crazy Bastards. They lock up in the middle of the ring. Christian Mills taking the advantage to start with wrist lock in a twist. Making Gus De La Vega feeling the pain right now. And we're seeing all this because the Crazy Bastards has taken in Mr. Stephen Frick as I guess it's sort of a friend, a roommate at the insane asylum. I'm not quite sure what was going on with well, that. Well, apparently also, Psycho Dan Lydon, did they, did, maybe they all stay at the same, same asylum together. I think he just, he just joined out of his own free will. Or whatever that Gunther told him. Christian Mills makes the, t well, he's got a, well, it's not a puppet, it's a stuffed animal. Wait a minute, it's not a stuffed animal, that's his friend. I don't know, I don't even understand. Oh. What I do understand is a double, Drop kick to the seated Gus De La Vega. And the crazy bastards. These guys are innovators in the ring. They come up with some incredible moves that personally I've never seen in over 25 years in the wrestling just, business. Just when you think you know them, they'll throw something right out of left field you haven't seen. And that's the problem with the set incorporated has to deal with. That's why they have the captain there, because the captain has seen and done everything, so he knows exactly what's gonna be going on with the crazy bastards. Well, Dan Lydon in, has the wrist lock, and then the elbows catching Gus De La Vega. Gus De La Vega is feeling a lot of pain right now. I believe the fans are telling him to break it off. They're obviously oh, not, disgusting. these fans do not care for Gus De La Vega. Wait a minute, here oh. comes Rafael Delgado with a cheap shot from behind on Dan Lydon. I wasn't looking, I was seeing at the situation with Francisco Chiazzo, he had something in his eye. Francisco Chiazzo, okay. oh come on, Francisco Chiazzo. The Godfather was distracting the referee so that the set could do some more nefarious activities behind the referee's he back. He might have a legitimate eye injury. He has to make sure that that stuff is out of his eye. You never know what's going on. You don't know what the crazy bastards and Dan Line are bringing in the ring. The set incorporated. Oh, up, set up, and oh there he goes. <laughs> come on, come on. That You can't tell me that's not a low blow, Vic Slohan. I think Commissioner Rick Thames needs to have a talk with these referees by, by about allowing that as a legal maneuver. All I know is I'm very happy that Francisco Chiato has been able to recover from his eye injury in the middle oh, of this match. Oh, give me a break. A great to there Hill was Delgado. nothing wrong with Francisco Chiato's eyes. These guys are just dirty, dirty wrestlers. I, I gotta say, I, no. I'm kind of disgusted. I think it's but crazy. what I continually see out here every week from the set incorporated. You wanna talk about dirty, dirty wrestlers? We're talking about the crazy bastards and Psycho Dan Lydon. That's why Chiazzo's eyes been having trouble. That's why Catalina Perez has been having trouble with her eyes and been looking at Uncle Duck that way. Captain Aaron is on the outside telling Catalina Perez to stay away from Uncle Duck. Like a smart Here goes Chiazzo in the corner with a little assistance from Rafael Delgado. Here comes Gus De La Vega, oh. he goes in, reversal, oh. sends, sends Rafael Delgado to Dan Lydon. Yeah. And here comes the somersault attack by Gus De La Vega. This could be over. One, two, the referee was slightly out of position there. Yeah, that should have been a four. But nonetheless, look at the athleticism, the poetry in motion by the set incorporated. Isolating their man and using all three members to put on their damage. Gus De La Vega with a reverse chin lock on Dan Lydon, but Lydon is fighting out. He's got those shots to the midsection, but Gus De La Vega cuts him off. Oh, what a suplex! 
by Gus De La Vega. Snapped him over. Shades of the Dynamite Kid on that one. Oh, absolutely. Gus De La Vega dragging light it over. Makes the tag to Rafael Delgado. He's in. Drops the elbow. Really more on the midsection in the chest right there. Probably knocking the wind out of Psycho Dan Lydon. It almost looked like he wanted to cut him in half with that elbow. That was so vicious. When the set incorporated is in control, it's like a shark smelling blood in the water because they know somebody is weakened and they just go on the full attack like they're doing right now with Psycho Dan Lydon. Absolutely, and that's why I think the crazy bastards and Dan, Psycho Dan Lydon and regretting ever taking this matchup, oh. ever regretting ever sticking their nose into the business of the set incorporated. Well, that's quite a right punch by Gus Taylor. The referee needs to check right now. It looks like the form is under the chin, which would make this a chokehold. Uh, how do you know that's under the chin in there with the neck? That's all beard. It certainly looks like it's under the chin to me, but Leiden, he's getting a second win right now. But De La Vega cuts him off once again, and then a gorgeous neck breaker makes the tag to the godfather of professional wrestling, Francisco Chiazzo. He's given the last rights right now. There he goes, and here he comes, but Lydon's out of the way. Francisco Chiazzo crashes down. There was nobody home. Can Dan Lydon make the tag? Can he get one of the crazy bastards in here right now? All of a sudden, they need to help the godfather. They need to help the godfather. Oh my God, look at him. I've never seen him so hurt. He needs yeah. to make that tag. Piazzo's in bad shape right now, but Lydon's hurt too. Who can make the tag first? Who can make it in the corner? Piazzo oh, makes the tag. So they've got him, but here comes John Strange. Close lines to Delgado down again. John Strange ducks the close line, hits the rope. Ow. Leg lariat by insane John Strange. And John Strange is calling for the body slam. Oh. And he hits it. He hits it full force. It makes splash. Oh. One, two, and no. So close, so close to the three count. Insane John Strange. Tags Dan Lydon back in. Let's see if they can put Rafael Delgado out. He scoops him up. Oh no, we could be seeing a major upset here. Oh, and oh. double team move brings Delgado down. Lydon goes for the big two count. No, Gus, Gus De La Vega breaks it up and things are breaking down here at WWE Proving Ground. Big slow in, I think things are out of control right now. Things are out of control inside and outside the ring. There's a war inside the ring. What a what fight. What's Kelly Perez doing with well, What's going on, Kelly Perez, once again, she's putting the moves on Uncle Duff just like I said she was. Oh, oh wait a minute, Aaron, wait, Aaron was Nova that? protecting the honor of Catalina Perez. What did he do? Did he use some brass knucks on Uncle Duck? What the heck is going on here? Whatever Uncle Duck attacked by Captain Aaron Nova. What the hell is going on here? Biden is up and down. Big sky high bomb by Rafael Delgado. And where, where are the crazy bastards? Apparently they're out there. What is going on here? What is going on right now is the set of coffee is about to do something special. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The referee shouldn't allow this. No. The set incorporated gets the win. What a win by the set incorporated. All that. While Uncle Jeff was trying to put the moves on Catalina Perez, and the captain was able to defend I think her it was the other way around. I'm telling you, Catalina Perez went out there making eyes and no. winking at Uncle Jeff. They had this plan all along to go ahead and distract him so that Aaron Nova could get that cheap shot on Uncle Jeff. They know that the crazy bastards are super protective of their Uncle Duff. They took advantage of that situation. Well, they weren't protective enough because tonight, Uncle Duff gets knocked out and the set incorporated wins.
I mean, I should have, maybe I'll rag on him a little bit. I'll rag on him. But who's this guy? What's he doing in the land? I'm a perfect. I know this guy. All right, wrestling fans, we're back at Proving Ground for this big matchup. I'm Vic Slohan, joining me in the Eagle's Nest, an old running buddy of mine, an old cohort, Rotten Rick Roberts. What's going on, Rotten Rick? Well, you know, I haven't seen you since the early 2000s. I've been all over the place scouting people for the longest time. Now I'm here tonight, racing. Proving Ground fans tonight on, on you. Oh, uh, yeah, Let's totally. go. And it has been you, and it's been the set incorporated, and it's been Hans Kemper. In the ring right now, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Warrens, he's actually on tour from the UK here in the United States. Last week, he got a big win at Rock and Wrestling, and tonight, he gets a shot at the ACW Cruiserweight Championship. Yes, I know Daniel Sutherland. I see him on my scouting missions. This guy is the real deal. Oh, he absolutely is. He is basically the greatest ACW Cruiserweight Champion my beautiful blue eyes have ever seen. And it, I, you know what, I just got to listen to this great introduction. I've seen Daniel Starlin and Aaron Nova a lot. I'm catching up Rick Roberts over here. This gentleman, two-time ACW Cruiserweight Champion, but he's got a bit of a bit of a challenge tonight. You know, when you get somebody coming in from all the way across the pond, Rotten Rick, you don't got a lot of time to, to you know, schedule against them or train against them. Oh yeah, that's definitely. Sometimes, you, this guy, you can get by with, with just with the mystique of someone new, and they're gonna get you at any given time. Absolutely. I myself haven't seen him a whole lot. I didn't see him last week. I know, though, he's very much influenced by the newer wrestlers of today from the UK, like Zack Sabre Jr. and Will Ospreay. But also, he's a nod to a lot of the older guys, like Mark Roll Rollerball, uh, Rocco, Dynamite Kid, Davey Boy Smith, those guys back in those days. Yeah, because the UK-based wrestlers, they, they, they have the thing with it, where a high flyer, you can ground the high flyer, you can neutralize their high flying tactics. Absolutely, but that's the thing about Aaron Warrens. He's gonna have to use a lot of high flying and ground ground game against a guy like Daniel Starling because I'll tell you, Starling is a five-tool athlete right in that ring. Well, you can see right there, when they're technically sound, grabbing that arm, trying to work on that arm. Warrens able to return it though, putting in a little bit of an angle. I like how they put the elbows up. Oh, a little Nigel McGuinness action there. We definitely got a UK flavor, Rotten Rick. Yes, there is. Look at him, he's, he's actually working the arm. This guy's trying to get out of it, but he's holding on to it. So far, both guys jostling for position. Warren's going in with that hammerlock. Starling having a little trouble getting a chop there. And here comes a high flying Rick Roberts. Big kip up. And so far, the so far, the challenger seems to think he's got things in his control. Yeah, he's starting to do, use his uh, high-flying tactics to get, get down on Daniel Starling. It's starting to work right now. There's a little bit of a streak going. Little bit. Getting the crowd into the match, but you don't want to do that and waste time against the champion. Oh! See you right there, Roderick. Something happened with that left knee. After some of these newer guys. Show button hot dogging. Just gave him that, made that mistake, and now Daniel Starling, the ultimate professional that he is, is taking over and working on that one. Daniel Starling um, basically become a master of the pile driver and a master of the figure four amongst the 7,363 other moves he knows in wrestling. I'd say he, that's a conservative number. Yeah, definitely. See, there's working on that, working on that leg. He's gonna wear him down. He's actually neutralizing him, so he can't go back on that top right? Yeah, absolutely, Rotten Rick Roberts. Just like I taught you back in the day, huh? <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
And there is the captain, Aaron Nova, outside the ring with that beautiful cowboy hat that we've seen three times tonight here on Proving Ground. Oh, and as Daniel Starlin right now talking with the referee, I think Aaron Nova's actually trying to massage the leg of Aaron Warren. Yeah, something like stretch a little yeah, bit, you know, the blood flowing, something along Little the gentleman's way. shift, you know, a little sportsmanship in that one. Yep, yep. Right now, the champion is in control. Warren, so that's the thing. If your knees hurt, use the fist. Yep. There, he, there he goes. Her ultimate professional knows this guy. Went back with that leg. He's going to ground him again. Stop him dead in his tracks. You're absolutely right, Rotten Rick. And right now, Starlin just very, as I say, imperceptible. Just piecing apart his opponent. That was just a good old roundhouse run. And he does it very well. Now he's going into the corner. Oh! Nasty elbow by Warrens. Well, the challenger still has a little bit left in him. Kicks him down using his feet. Oh! No! See, you. Uh, I hate to say it. We're going to do that extra roll, a little bit of hot dogging, and trying to do the flashy move. He got caught dead in his tracks again. There he is, back on the mat. Yep, he just one second too long on that roll, and that cost him. Trying to get himself back into this match now, because Starlin is actually hurting himself here. And Warren's shaking that knee up, trying to get the adrenaline flowing. Big drop kick! Another one! It still keeps landing on his knee, but he's fighting Rotten Rick. There he is, there he is. DDT! And now the champion's actually reeling over here. Going to the ropes. Springboard moonsault. This could be it, Roderick. Oh! I'll give it to him. I'll give him an A. I'll give it A for effort trying to get that pin. Unbelievable on that bust. But he's actually... Busted knee right there. Still able to pull out that moonsault. And he's got the champion in trouble, Roderick. Yes, he does. There he goes. Hot dog. I think it's just lack of experience. It might be like it might be lack of experience. It's also just the pain that he's suffering right now in that left knee. Starlin taking him up. All the way drops him on that knee. Oh, the dragon screw leg whip right in there. And now Starlin completely in control. Looks like he's gonna go for the figure four, Roderick! Oh, there it is. Perfectly executed. Can Warren get out of this? This is beating down a lot of people. Aaron Warren's right now fighting with all his power in this match. He has nowhere to go. Right in the middle of the ring with nowhere to go. He's got it perfectly in that figure four. The two legs on the leg of Warren's, and Warren's has no choice but to tap out. That is nothing he do. Well, as the announcement is being made, Daniel Starlin is now giving up that hope. He wants Aaron Rodgers Warren to, do he wants him to return to the UK right now with a crutch. And there's Drake Xavier in the ring. That's the number one contender right now for the ACW Cruiserweight Championship, Rotten Rick. Drake Xavier. Yeah, he just he was trying to teach him a lesson. You want to get in the ring with the champion, you better have the best of the line. There you go, folks. The words of wisdom from Rotten Rick Roberts. Your winner of this match is still ACW champion, Daniel Starlin. Excellent. We've got a grudge match going on, right? Hey man, who was that guy that took that my was Rod Rick Roberts? Why'd you Ryan take his chair? The Rod Rick Roberts. The Rod Rick Roberts. The Rod Rick Roberts. I didn't even know he was in the building. He was in the building. He graces us with his presence. Speaking of gracing us with his presence, it's time to see the awesome one himself, Awesome Adam Vale, come down to the ring. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully things don't get as messy and out of control as it does the last time these two were in the ring. From what I understand, the match pretty much 
ended abruptly as it turned into a bit of a bloodbath in there in between these two. Yes, absolutely. And I'll tell you, Adam Vale right now, he has made it known not only does he want to beat Jonathan Hudson, he wants to take him out. Well, if he could take out Jonathan Hudson, what a feather in the cap it would be for this young man, this young athlete that so desperately wants to get to the next level in this business. And I think he will. He has been on such an upward trajectory this year. But I tell you, taking out Jonathan Hudson has been proven week in, week out is one of the hardest things to do in the world of professional wrestling. Jonathan Hudson, the very first WWN Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion. And he's gonna get what they're saying is his final shot at the title on July the 22nd at Battle for the Brave. And I know Jonathan Hudson is, he has amped up his training. He has only one thing he cares about and that's becoming the WWF Proving Ground Champion for the second time. His last shot, huh? No more. That's what they're <laughs> saying. Well, that will truly be something. But right now, he's got to get through the man in front of him. Awesome Adam Vale. He's going to have to survive the man that's in front of him. Awesome Adam Vale. And I'll tell you, these two, they, they have no love lost for each other. Well, they've locked horns right here. Hudson pushes Vale into the corner. Let's see if we get a clean break here. Referee comes between them. I saw a clean break, clean break by the awesome oh. one. I'm not sure about Hudson. Oh. Hudson's paint pointing to that scar in his head from where he got busted open the last time these two wrestled yeah, right he here. About that. That's the thing, though, with awesome Adam Vale talking about taking Jonathan Hudson out. The thing about Hudson is you do not want to make him mad. You do not want to make him intense. He's one of the most dangerous people I've seen when he's in that state. Well, Jonathan Hudson is dangerous no matter what state he's in. But when you actually make him angry, uh, I, some scary things can happen, my me, friend. Me and you have seen that time in and time out. I still think that last guy he took out is right now in Mexico still. I believe you're right. Big Tessa's, uh, Tessa's strength. This is pretty interesting. It is. You would think the automatic advantage would be with Jonathan Hudson. He does a slight advantage now, but oh, Adam Vale oh, decided yeah. to get out of that situation. He knew that wasn't a winning one for him. My weekly reminder to you, WWN Proving Ground fans, awesome Adam Vale knows how to use his knees and his elbows better than anybody else I see in that ring. Well, he's definitely perfected those offensive maneuvers. Look at that monkey oh. flip brings him over and he's driving those elbows. Excuse me, that's how he opened up Jonathan Hudson last time. And I think he's gonna open him up again. I think we got the EMT getting down the ringside just in case they have been on alert for this match. Oh, he's going for the cross on breaker, Sean Dave. Yes, EMT Dave Akers is always in the house here. Official EMT of WWN Proving Ground. See, Vail tried to go for that breaker, but Hudson smartly clasping the hands, now getting the leverage in there. Might actually get his shoulders down to the ground. Yeah, Vail needs to be careful there. He can end up getting counted out when he's actually on the offense. What a forearm shot with it. Oh, Hudson saying, yeah, you want to try that? Here's one back for you right there, kid. And there goes. Wow, these two, they are laying it all on the line in the ring right now. Just tremendous force being done, no shots to each of those guys. Hudson was actually inviting him in. He absorbed those shots and now he's raining them down on the side of the head of Awesome Adam Vale. Sends him into the corner, comes out. What a lariat brings Adam Vale down. Hudson scoops him up. Big body slam, brings him down, hits the rope, drops the elbow. Hudson going for the pin, one, two, two count only. Thing Adam that, Vail managed to get out. You're right, the thing with that elbow too, he didn't go very high up with it, he just went straight down from about, about two or three feet up and just delivers right into Adam Vale. It is about putting as much hurt on your opponent as you can in a match like this. Jonathan Hudson with a brutal chop to the chest. 
of Adam Vale. But Vale fighting back right away. But oh my God, listen to that contact. Oh, and once again. My God, that is a lot of punishment. I hope the awesome one knows what he's doing. Sends him in reversal. Oh, Adam Vale catches that. Oh my God. Sends Hudson into the corner. You literally can't have your neck broken on a maneuver like that, Vic Slohan. And that's just the one thing Jonathan Hudson cannot afford. His neck has been through hell this year. Through so many bads, including awesome Adam Vale. Injury previously. This is Vale's chance right here to get the win. No. So close, so close. If Adam Vale ever had a hope, a real hope of beating Jonathan Hudson, this is the best chance he's had because that maneuver into the corner was just sheerly brutal. Absolute brutality. Now it looks like he's going for an STF. He's got the toe hold. Can he get him into the can he get him into that vice John Davis? He almost has it, but Hudson's fighting his way to the ropes, makes it to the ropes. Oh, uh, just not enough time to be able to get him in there. Oh. Hudson kicks off. See, what a, what a brutal match we've seen so far in this one. Oh! I love how Adam Vale used that momentum. He kicked Hudson into the ropes, then catches him with an elbow as he was bouncing off. He's gonna go for it again. Here he goes. I think this time he's gonna get it in there. Can he hook in the STF and get the submission on Jonathan Hudson? He almost has it. He almost has it, but Hudson is crawling to the ropes. With everything he has, he is crawling to the ropes. It's, it's, it, he has some foot in there, but he just cannot get the face, get the arms across the face, and now Hudson's using his strength to power up. And I believe Vale has it. Does he have, no, doesn't have it quite hooked in. Hudson's still fighting out. And Hudson makes it to the ropes again, forcing the break by the referee. I don't know if Vale's gonna go back to this maneuver because he seems to be struggling with, with right now the upper body strength of Jonathan Hudson. That is a very big factor in a move like that. Oh, and man. Vale, let's see if he can follow up for here he comes. But Hudson sends him up, but no, Vale stops on the ring apron. Hudson goes for an offensive move, blocked by Adam Vale, forearm by Vale. But wait a minute, Hudson stops him and hooks him in. Stops him with the DDT. Oh, he's got him covered, Ref. He's got him. Oh, almost. Adam Vale could be out right now. He could be. I think, yeah, I think he's out. I think Adam Vale has no clue where he is right now. But Jonathan Hudson is still feeling the effects of that offensive attack by Adam Vale. Absolutely, you're right. I think Vale is out on his feet. I think Hudson right now trying to get wind back into his body, trying to get the pain out of his neck that has been hurting so much. Well, the fans are cheering him on, and there he comes. Clothesline takes Vale down. Clothesline takes him down again. Hudson sends him to the ropes reversal. Nope, he has him up. Spine buster! by Hudson, rolls Vale through and hooks him up, has him up in the air, Tiger Driver! This could be it, three count, but no! How did Adam Vale kick out? The Spine Buster followed with the Tiger Driver. Absolute instinct, that's how he got out of there. And I still think he's out on his feet. Well, you've gotta give so much credit to both of these men. But this young man, awesome Adam Vale, has come so far in a short amount of time here at WWE Proving Ground, showing the world that he deserves to be in the ring with the A players in this business like Jonathan Hudson. Alpha Daddy, oh, I don't know if that was wise because they might have just woke Adam Vale up. Oh yeah, no, that was a mistake. Back to that. Here he goes, can Adam Vale hook in the, the oh, STF again? Oh, he's got that leg hooked in big time now. The resiliency of Adam Vale. Now he just needs to get his hands over. If Jonathan Hudson though, not allowing it. I agree with what you said. Hudson made a critical mistake by slapping Adam Vale and waking him up a bit before going for that tornado four of a punch that he uses. Hey, hey, he's pulling his hair. I'll tell you one thing about Bill. He's smart on this one. Instead of going for the neck, he's continuing on the left knee on that left foot. But then also including those elbows, those vicious elbows of Adam Vale that he uses so effectively in the ring. Absolutely. 
But Hudson just will not yeah. tap. Hudson, is he countering him? Back? Hudson looks like he's made a, he's figured out a way to counter him into an arm bar. It's bringing him down, and he's going for a cross face of his own right now. Oh, he's got He has him locked in. Is that it? Is he got it? Can Adam Vale, can he survive this cross face from Jonathan Hudson? I think he's out, Sean Davis. I think you're right. Yeah, the referee says that's it. He's ringing the bell. Adam Vale has passed out. What a bruising, wow. bruising war between these two. And huge win, huge win from Jonathan Hudson. But what intestinal fortitude on the behalf of awesome Adam Vale. Absolutely right. And I'll tell you, both these guys, they're top contenders for the Proving Ground Championship with Hudson on his way to getting his last title shot. Up. Wow. And I'll tell you, Sean Davis, have I told you how much I like these guys? These guys, meaning... I, I mean, I, Scyther and Chungus. These guys. I swear, I remember a couple months ago you didn't like them that much. Well, you know, I, I think there was a misunderstanding. I, I think these guys now are on such, a, on such a tear. They know what they want. They want those tag team championships. And I think they're ready for them. Well, tonight they're not getting a shot at the belt as Benji Neptune was not able to be here tonight. Yeah, why is that? Well, he had other things coming up, but he sent, he sent a replacement and a very, very interesting and tough replacement that we're about to see coming to the ring to team with him, Tito Torres tonight, but this is not a title match. However, if Scyther and Chungus win this match, they're certainly in line for another title shot. Well, they're, they're the uncrowned tag team champions. They should be. Wait a minute. Is that, is that Devin Davis? That's right. Wait a minute. That's not fair. That's insane. Right. You can't have this guy out here. Dirty Devin Diaz is a longtime friend of Benji Neptune. They actually went to school together. They played football together. And when Benji needed someone to take his place, he called his good friend, the dirty man, Devin Diaz. And Diaz was up for the opportunities here to team with Tito Torres to take on Chungus and Scyther tonight. I think it's gonna be an incredible match. That's in, it's insane, this guy tears through everybody he sees. Nobody has stopped this guy since I've seen him improving ground. Ah, uh, you know what, another another decision by our crooked commissioner, Rick Thames. Well, Devin Diaz has been on a tear of late. We haven't seen him here at Proving Ground because he's been wrestling all over the United States in top promotions making a huge name for himself beyond here in Proving Ground. But he's come back here tonight to the major league of current professional wrestling, WWN, and he's here to team with Tito Torres to what he says is do the dirty deeds on top oh. of Scyther and Chungus. Oh and make sure that they're not gonna come after those belts anytime soon. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. Well, I, I still have faith in my boys out there. My my good friends, Scyther and Chungus. Oh, they're your good friends now. Well, they, they don't oh, know man. that, but yeah, so they're my good friends. Okay. I'm still a little worried to come near them. I mean, look at this, he's, he's towering oh. over Scyther. Scyther. The fans are really getting under his skin right now, which is a big mistake. Well, uh, why not? These fans get under my skin and I'm all the way up here. Unbelievable. Hey, we have the best fans in the world right here in Port Ritchie, Florida, at the WWE Training Center. We're here each and every Friday night, just like the days of world-class wrestling from the Dallas Sportatorium. We've got right here at the WWE Training Center. Right now, Scyther had that nice headlock. Oh! 
Oh, the dirty man's been putting on some size. He's been hitting that gym like a maniac. I know, that's insane. They should, they should allow Cycle to be able to, to wrestle with like bigger boots, and stilts. Sometimes. Bigger boobs? You say he has bigger boobs? Bigger boots. Oh, okay, he, all right. It's not fair. He's like almost a, foot, a whole foot shorter than Danny Diaz. Well, Devin Diaz. Devin Diaz. Oh. You can at least get the guy's name right, Vic Hey, Come on. I know he hasn't been here in a while, but look, it says right on his tights, Dirty Devin. Dirty Devin. And that's in case he gets lost and somebody knows how to, oh, well, where to send in him case, back home. In case the airport loses his luggage. Maybe. Right now, right. both men feeling each other out here. Saito's going to play a very deep psychological game here. Oh! oh. He gets caught again. It, it didn't work on that one. No, everything Scyther's been trying here with the dirty man, Devin Diaz, has backfired. But it looks like the big man, there Chungus, is coming into the ring right now. Here we go. The big guy, Chungus, is in there. Oh, sexy Chungus. <laughs> again, Chungus and Scyther are former ACW Tag Team Champions. They're still right now the number one contenders. They really wanted a title match tonight. But man, they are certainly not having an easy time with Benji Neptune's replacement, the dirty man Devin Diaz. There they go, locked up in the middle of the ring. Chungus pushing Diaz back to the corner. Do it See if we have a well. clean break here. No. That was a clean break. Yeah, that was a little bit of an insulting move there by Chungus. Well, there, was, there was some dirt on Devin Diaz because he's dirty. So I he's don't know. To wipe you it know off. If Devin Diaz has, has any type of a weak point, I would say it's probably being a little bit of a hothead. And Chungus probably doesn't want to bring that, that out of Devin Diaz any time in this match. Look at that. The power of Chungus. Oh, oh, reversal by Diaz. He's in control now. He threads with the punch, but no, nope. no, Chungus is cow, actually cowering Good job, in the corner. He wasn't cow, he was, he was doubling up because he was going to get an illegal shot in the corner, which, by the way, nice job by the referee breaking that up. Devin Diaz, lots of credit for this young man. He calls himself the dirty man, but actually had a, a clean break there. He could have rained down with a punch, but he did. He was listening to the referee. Obviously, Devin Diaz is here Can't to win by playing by the rules here tonight. So lots of credit to Devin Diaz. Well, of course, you got to play by the rules here on Proving Ground. We've seen that match in and match out. Well, they're locked up again here. Wow, beautiful scientific maneuver by Devin Diaz. Brings Chungus down, locks in the top wrist lock, and Chungus is in pain right now. Yeah, he is. Look at the way he's got that elbow up there. He's got a type at a degree where elbows shouldn't actually be bending like that. He lets go back into a traditional wrist lock, twisting the arm right now. Comes over, tags the Tito Torres. Torres going to the top rope. Comes out double axe handle. Goes with the arm ringer. Double team maneuver coming up, sending Chungus into the corner. Elbow by. Devin Diaz, and here comes Tito. Using Diaz as a springboard, sends him in. He gets the big man up and down with a side slam. Wow, what strength by Diaz. Referees saying that Diaz needs to get out of the ring as Tito Torres is the legal man. Tito Torres locks in the reverse chin lock now. Now into a side headlock. Back to the wrist lock, possibly. There he goes, but Chungus goes right into the eyes. Cheap maneuver by Chungus. Backbreaker oh, by the cheap, big though. man. Oh. <laughs> that was not cheap at all. That was effective. Goes for that cover. Almost gets it. I think that's a little soon. Oh my god, he just gave him a soccer kick right into the rib. Ole, 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 ole. Tag to Cypher comes in. Oh. Overhand chop to the chest of Tito Torres. Now Scyther is biting the face of Tito Torres. Come on Did now. Did you actually see the teeth hit the skin? You can clearly see it. Then a big right to the jaw. Referee David Sanderson needs to start enforcing the rules a little bit more in this. Oh, here comes Chungus with a big right. 
Tito Torres could have a dislocated jaw after that punch. And now look at the double team and behind the referee's back. Well, the dirty, dirty Devin Diaz should not be arguing with the referee. He should be getting back in the corner as Mad Men at work right now in control. And this should be gone. What a knee that was by Chungus right into the upper back of Tito Torres. Now he holds him down as Scyther just comes in and stops Tito Torres. And Scyther right now with a little celebration. He goes for the cover. No. Gonna get him. What a night we're having tonight here at WWF Proven Ground. Each and every Friday night here in Fort Ritchie, Florida. You can watch us every week on WWF Proven Ground TV on YouTube. That's exactly right. Madman in control. And I gotta tell you, Tito Torres and Devin, Dirty Devin Diaz, uh, they're not a normal tag team, are they, Sean Davis? They're not. They're not. Again, Devin Diaz doing his friend Benji Neptune a solid tonight by coming here to team with Tito Torres to take on Cypher and Chungus. And what a match we have tonight. This is tag team wrestling at its best. There's a blind tag by Chungus coming in. Oh, giant chop. Like a lumberjack chopping down a tree in the forest. Chungus is just leveled. Tito Torres in the chest, hooks him, brings him up, suplex position, and drops him down hard in the middle of the ring, goes for the pin, one, two, two count only, Tito Torres is out, and look at these punches from the tape fist, it looks like, of Chungus. Absolute destruction and domination by Mad Men at work. I know these guys could do it. Look at the quick tags. That incredible suplex by Chungus. I'll tell you, these guys are impressing me more and more. When Chungus and Scyther get the advantage, it is so hard to stop them. But Tito Torres is doing his best right now by blocking the suplex attempts by Scyther. He blocked three of them. And he counters them himself. He, that was pure power and pure determination by Tito Torres to bring Cypher over. Now can Tito Torres get to the corner and tag the dirty man, Devin Diaz? Oh, he's a long ways off as Scyther now goes oh, for oh, no. Oh, no. But here comes Devin Diaz. Watch the punch. Punch of his own by Devin Diaz. Punch for Scyther. A punch for Chungus. A punch for Scyther. A punch for Chungus. A block, a kick, and a chop by Devin Diaz. That's not fair. Comes in, splash to Chungus in the corner. Here he comes up, clothesline the corner for Scyther. Belly to belly suplex by Dirty Devin Diaz. Ducks the clothesline, hits the ropes. Flying clothesline by Devin Diaz. That's the locks. Oh no! Power slam by Devin Diaz on the big man Chungus. I can't believe what I saw. He took that big guy over like it was nothing. And now he delivers that elbow. And this could be it right here. He's going for one, two, and no. Two and a half count somehow. Chungus managed to escape, but what an offensive attack by the dirty man, Devin Diaz. He's coming over, he's tagging Tito Torres, and this very well could be it. They could be setting things up oh, no. to finish. Tornado, oh, he just punched his own partner, Diaz. That was obviously a mistake. That was a mistake, obviously, that was a mistake. Are, are you kidding me? Oh, are you kidding me? Well, what the hell is going on? They were in control oh. of this match. Oh. Are you kidding me? That was a, that was a simple mistake. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That was obviously an easy, but that was just a simple mistake. But it was what a mistake I, nonetheless. You can't make a mistake like that against with Devin Diaz. What the hell was that about? And look at this. Oh. Double team finisher by Chungus and Sy Are you kidding me? Yes. Oh, yes. I, Tito Torres may not ever walk again. Never mind defend those tag team titles. And Mad Men at work seizing the opportunity off Dirty Devin Diaz. What the hell happened? Well, Devin Diaz was here as a favor to Benji Neptune. And one mistake by Tito Torres. And this hothead loses it and attacks his own partner and leads him to get beat. You know better than anything. You can't make 
toughest stakes in professional wrestling. There's so much at the, there's so much on the line, but I'll tell you right there, standing tall in the ring are your future tag team champions, Mad Men at War. One, Vic Slohan. We yes. have had such a huge night. We've had so many great matches, but this is the big one right here. Absolutely. This is for all the marbles. Something that Mr. Stephen Frick does not have many of. I'm telling you right now, I have just a feeling in the pit of my stomach that this is going to be the night for Stephen Frick. I believe tonight is the night where Stephen Frick is going to finally be the WWE Proven Ground Heavyweight Champion. You've been hanging around Buddha, Boone the Gator King for too long because I'll tell you, Stephen Frick is not going to get anywhere near the Proven Ground title tonight. And there's that guy who tried to put the moves, tried to hit on Catalina Perez, Uncle Duff. In fact, he, <laughs> he still, he still got a little pain from what Captain Aaron Ova well, gave Well, Stephen Frick, it was so close last week. If it wasn't for the interference, the uh, vicious attack by Buckshot Brian Brock, who I got to admit is a good friend of mine and somebody that I've employed on one, more than one occasion. But he was obviously paid off by the set oh incorporated my. You to try to injure Stephen Frick. And if it wasn't for that, I believe that Stephen Frick would have won the tournament last week and would be the WWE Improvement Ground Heavyweight Champion. You and that Donnie guy, you keep harking about how Brian Brock was paid off by the set incorporated. You know, I. You don't believe everything you see, fans. Don't believe everything you see. But right now, coming down to the ring, here is your Proving Ground Champion, the greatest multimedia star wrestling has ever produced, the host of Richie's Way. And you know, I've heard some rumors he might actually be hosting Wheel of Fortune this fall. Is he taking over for Pat Sage? Yeah, he's leaving. You know, wow. the, the producers were actually, you know. I would heard those rumors true too, but I didn't know they were true. Uh, between you and me, Sean Davis, I hear it was Vanna White who wanted him in there. Let's see that. the challenger, the man that could be your next WWE Proven Ground Champion. All it takes is three seconds. And to be honest, Sean Davis, I don't know what Mr. Stephen Frick is doing in the ring after that beating he got last week. Look, Stephen Frick is one of the toughest athletes in the entire world of professional wrestling. And Vic Sloan, from what I understand, a huge match has been signed for July the 22nd at Battle for the Brave as Stephen Frick will do battle against Buckshot Ryan Rock that night. Oh, that's going to be one hell of so a match. So if Stephen Frick wins tonight, he will be the heavyweight champion going into July the 22nd, which I don't know what that would mean for Jonathan Hudson's opportunity against Rich Portaella. Well, that causes a lot of interesting situations there. Well, we could have some scenarios that the championship committee will have to look at at that point. But right now, we have two of the best in the business, two of the best in the sport, locking up in the middle of the ring, Steven Frick and Rich Portaella for the WWN Proving Ground Heavyweight Championship. Now, I know the champion's got a big game plan in a match like this against Mr. Steven Frick, and the key for him is to stay on that game plan because Frick 
as powerful as he is, as tough as he is, he gets very emotional very easily and can go off the rails. Oh, oh and the injuries can mount up very quickly. He's favoring that neck. Yep. Obviously from the attack of Brian Brock last week where he actually hung Steven Frick using his bull rope. <laughs> that was kind of funny. I tell you right now, Rich Portaelli he has to stay on the game plan and make sure to work on the neck. Hey, work on the knees and the feet. The champion right there sizing up Stephen Frick. Oh, blocked by Frick. Big punch, another big punch. He has the champion rocking right now. Sends him in reversal by the champion. Goes for a close on, misses. Frick with a fly and shoulder tackle brings RPA down to the mat and the champion decides it's time for a break. But while that's going on, Frick is still favoring that shoulder, he's favoring that neck. It's Catalina Perez right now, calming down the champions, like it's okay, Daddy, you got this. You're gonna go in, get back onto the game plan. Well, Rich Portaella, a two-time now WWN Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion, our first two-time champion. Our first two-time champion, to be honest. Should have been the champion of all, of the whole time, but you know, when situations happen here in pro wrestling. Here we go, Steven Frick coming up, but Catalina Perez blocking. That's right. Rich Portaella. Give him the business, Catalina. Oh, yeah. Hey, Wait a minute. What's he, what Frick doing pulling Catalina? No, 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 no. Rich Portaella just used Catalina Perez as a ploy to get a cheap shot in on Steven Frick, come on. I disagree with that, but right you now. Can't, you can't treat a lady that way. Well, wait a minute, let me rephrase that. Ah, never mind. Nonetheless, Rich Portaiella has got the control. Oh, wait a minute. Uncle Dump better be careful. The champion talking smack with Uncle Dump. Throws Steven Frick back in. And the champion is like a lion just stalking his prey. Enjoying, enjoying the thrill of the attack. The hunt and then the attack. Absolutely, and the prey right now is Stephen Frick. And he is wounded prey. A fighter, but wounded prey nonetheless. Out there on the ropes, gasping for air. Trying to block the pain that's just got to be reverberating to his neck, Sean Davis. It's unbelievable. Look at this. Again. He's choking him out. That injured neck. Rich Portaella, you can't argue with his game plan. He knew that Frick would still have a weak neck from last week, and he's come into this title defense tonight planning on capitalizing on every bit of the pain that Stephen Frick is in. Absolutely, and there's nothing Nothing these fans in Port Richie, Florida can do about it. Rich Portaiella is your proven ground champion, and he's proven it tonight. Rich Portaiella stomping away on Stephen Frick. Now he just has his boot right on the side of the yeah, face. Right in, my God, right in the mouth of Stephen Frick, it looked like. Oh, right in the mouth, right in the chick, right on that neck. That yeah. What I would say, the, uh, what's a gorilla monsoon medical term for that? That external sophipolis, I can't remember how oh, it's called, yeah. Enough. Forearm shot by Rich Portiello, another one. He is just torturing Stephen Frick right now. Rich Portiello, the WWE Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion. He is having a good time in the ring as he catches the elbow of Steven Frick. Frick goes for the pin. One, two, this could be a new champion. No. Had all his weight on him, too. I thought he had him for the three. But right back to the game plan is Ayala. There you go. No emotion. Just goes straight to it. Rich Portaiella again on the attack. All of his weight on the side of the head, putting all that pressure on the neck of Steven Frick. Rich Portaiella is in full control of this match and he's having a good time beating down Stephen Frick, trying to permanently injure him, trying to permanently put him out of the world of professional wrestling, scoops him up, giant body slam, drives him into the mat. Rich Portiello goes to the cover, one, two, two and a half count. Stephen Frick manages to get out. 
I was saying, if this continues on, Rich Portaella could have an episode of Richie's Way right here in the ring while he's beating up Stephen Frick. Wouldn't that be awesome? I don't know, but, but Stephen Frick, there is no quit in this man. And here he comes fighting back. He might be hurt. He might be injured. But there is no quit in Stephen Frick. Well, there may be no quit, but I'm not sure if there's any equilibrium right now with Stephen Frick because he's walking very harshly. His Again, favoring that neck. He just, he looks like a rag doll in that ring right now. Well, this man has taken so much punishment at the hands of the heavyweight champion, Rich Portiel. Look at that punch. It was like a kidney punch by Rich Portiel. Oh, no, isn't that beautiful? He's getting him set up. Frick sitting on the top turnbuckle. Oh. Rich Portiel has him hooked. Possible superplex, but no, Frick is fighting back. He is holding on tight. He is fighting back. And the shot to the kidneys, another shot by Steven Frick. And Rich Portiel has been stopped from doing, be able to perform that superplex. Steven Frick comes up fly and clothesline, brings the champion down. How in the hell is he doing this? I do not know. Steven Frick, once again, he is hurt, he is injured, he is not 100%, but he is fighting with every ounce of strength he has. He is fighting for the fans here at the WWN Training Center. He is fighting for his mom back at home that's watching this on TV tonight. He is fighting for his chance to be the WWN Proven Ground Heavyweight Champion. If Rich Portaiella isn't careful, that might actually happen. Oh, what a right by Frick. Oh, another one. It's like all of a sudden he's just come. He's healed. Belly to back suplex brings Rich Portaiella down. Frick goes to the cover. One, two, can this be it? No! So close. It's so close. Steven Frick can taste the WWE Proving Ground Heavyweight Championship at this point. He was so close, and he has to be asking himself, what's it going to take to beat Rich Portaiella? What's it going to take to become the WWE Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion? It's gonna take a lot, but I'll tell you right now, Steven Frick has got adrenaline running through his body, from his toes to his head. He went oh, for the spear, oh. but a leapfrog from RPA sent Frick into the corner. What an incredible maneuver by the champ. Now he's got to set up. Oh! You're an Aggie by RPA. And oh, so, oh my God. That was a three, wasn't it? It was so close. Referee's hand was coming down for the three, but somehow Steven Frick managed to reach down deep inside himself a kick out of that move. What a match. What a match we're seeing here tonight. Our main event this week here at WWF Proving Ground. What a classic, and I'll tell you, I saw the shock look in Rich Portaiella's face when he thought he had that three count. Well, Rich Portaiella, why is he taking off his wrist tape? What is going on here? I don't know, I, I don't know what's going on. Like I said, state of the game plan, but I'm not sure if this is part of it. That's the thing. off that wrist tape. I don't know what is what he's trying to do here. I, I wouldn't want to get arrogant right now, even if you are the champion. I don't see how he could, I mean, he's an arrogant and confident man, but Steven Frick is not a normal human being. No, he's not, but he's got something set up. And obviously something is being set by Rick Portaiella. Knees him in the stomach. Oh, he's setting up a neck breaker. Hangman oh. neck breaker by Rich Portaiella. This has got to be over. Goes for the pit. Two count. Oh, two and three quarters. Come on. Somehow, Steven Frick survives the hangman neck breaker of the champion, Rich Portaiella. I just hear the walls bouncing up and down. Frick, Frick, Frick. This crowd, this crowd is getting out of control. Well, this is an incredible title match that we have right now. What is it? Small package by Steven Frick. This could be it. Do we have a new champion? No. Rich Portaiella makes a kick out. Misses the clothesline. Steven Frick has him. Drops him down face first. If he gets the cover, we can have a new champion. Can he roll him over and get the cover? Can he get the pin? Can he get the pin? He's going. We have a new champion. No! No! My God, what a match we have tonight! 
What a title match this is! Two of the top wrestlers in all professional wrestling putting it all on the line for the sake of being the WWN Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion. The incredible resiliency after uh, Mr. Stephen Frick. It's insane. This guy just will not stop. He's coming at the champion over and over again, no uh, matter how many shots he's taken. Uh, it's amazing the abuse that both men have taken. Today. RPA has Frick up on his shoulders. Here's a possible power slam. No Frick from behind. Frick from behind. He's up on his back. Is that a choke hold? Is it a sleeper hold? I'm not sure. I can't see it myself, but right now, Rich Porta But RPA could be going down right now. Rich Porta could be going to sleep. He's losing we could have a new champion right here. If RPA, if our champion, if he goes down, we can have a new champion right here. Steven Frick could be the new WWE Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion. It looks like Rich Portiel, no, he's back up to his feet. Rich Portiel needs to stay on his feet because if he gets down, Frick had him out. Oh my goodness. RPA able to get out of that? And no, he's, he's back again. again. He's oh. back again. And now he has it hooked in. He has the sleeper hold hooked in. Can he put Rich Portiella out? Can he put Rich Portiella asleep? If he does, he'll be the new WWE Proven Ground Heavyweight Champion. Can he do it? It looks like RPA's going down. It looks like this could be over. It looks like we could have a new WWE Proven Ground Heavyweight Champion tonight. The champ's eyes are rolling back. They're rolling back. He's losing consciousness. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh, Here comes God. the setting corporate. Are you kidding me? They just rock. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here comes the Drake Xavier. Here comes Christian Mills. What is going on? Here comes Keanu. Here comes De La Vega. I think we got a street fight going on. Steven Frick. Steven Frick was just wrong. Here comes John Strange. On Francisco Keanu on the outside. Daniel Starl is in a Cruiserweight Champion. We got everyone all over the place here, Sean Davis. The Senate Incorporated absolutely ruined this match. They ruined this match. They ruined, they ruined Steven Frick's opportunity to be the new WWE Cooper Brown Heavyweight Champion. And right now this match is absolutely out of control. It's no longer We have a, match. a fight, that's right, it's not a match, it's a fight. We have an out of control fight right here at WWE Proving Ground. We have lost all control here at the training center. Just massive bodies, just throwing fists, kicks, that's left and right, Sean Davis. This is unbelievable. I am so upset that this match was ruined by the Sad Incorporated. Steven Frick gets the win, but he does not get the title. He was robbed tonight. Steven Frick should be the new WWE Proving Ground Heavyweight Champion, and he was robbed by the Sun Incorporated. Well, that's what you say, but what I think is still your champion, Rich Port Ayala. It doesn't matter how, it's just Rich Port Ayala's your champ. I promise you, things have not been settled between any of this man. I would say this might have been a battle, but the war will continue next week here at WWE Proving Ground. For Dick Slohan, for Rotten Rick Roberts, from Annie the Music Girl, I'm Sean Davis. We'll see you next week.